Lord. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. Amen. We like to take this time to welcome you to the straightway Church of Christ written in heaven of Bellevue, Florida, where the Apostle Pauline Johnson is the pastor and founder. Amen. If you desire prayer, you can reach us at 561-351-4881. We will gladly pray with you that the will of God will be done in your life. Come on and let's serve the Lord together. I come to glorify the Lord. I come to glorify the Lord. I come to glorify name of the Lord. I come to glorify the Lord. I come to glorify the Lord. I come to glorify the Lord. I come to glorify. Name of the Lord, I come to glorify the Lord. Help me to glorify the Lord. Help me to glorify the Lord. Help me to glorify. Name of the Lord. situations they find themselves in now. Amen. God is a healer, deliverer, and he will set free. Let's pray one for the other. Those are my prayer requests. I need the Lord. I need oh yes. Yeah. Yeah. 
let us say man as he comes. Without knowledge. Surely I spoke of things I do not understand, things too wonderful for me to know. You said, Listen now, and I will speak, and I will question you, and you shall answer me. My ears had heard of old of you, but now my eyes have seen you. Therefore I despise myself and repent in dust and ashes. I read for you, Job. 42nd chapter, verses 1 through 6, we're going to be edifying to you, so. The chimes of time bring out the news, another day is through. Someone slipped and fell. Was that someone you? You may have asked for added strength, your courage to renew. Don't be discouraged, for I bring a hope to you. It is no secret what God can do.
จะบอกไปแอนดี้ก็ไม่รู้เหตุเธอจะบอกไปแอนดี้ก็ไม่รู้เหตุเธอจะบอกไปแอนดี้ก็ไม่รู้เหตุเธอจะบอกไปแอนดี้ก็
of what the storm was really about when Jesus came with the disciples on his way to cross the lake to get to the other side to the man that was waiting there. So I call this when I when I study and, and I'm looking and I'm researching, I, I, I most of the time refer to it as unlocking the, the secrets in, of the Bible and, and, and the things that many of us just look, don't look at necessarily because we're so caught up into one part of the story. But sometimes there's a deeper meaning that's in that 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 uh, story, and, and we we overlook it because we we just caught up on the whole situation of all the miracles that he did and and and, and all of the other things, that, and we don't think about, for instance, how deep. It really was, and the importance of him to come across that that lake that day that day that he, they decided to, and 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 the disciples should have had faith to go on through this storm, right. knowing that Jesus was there because he was physically there with them already. Right. Right. And not only was he there, they had just seen him perform one of the most powerful right. miracles. That, that's recorded in the Bible, Amen. feeding the five thousand. But they, they didn't have faith to believe in what had just happened. They had forgot already. My Lord, my Lord. But they knew he was there, yes. so they took the time to, to wake him up, and and because they could, I guess they couldn't understand how could he sleep at a time like this because all they saw was the storm. My Lord. My Lord. But the storm wasn't wasn't the real issue. The storm was brought up to, to keep them from getting to where they needed to be. Amen. Jesus already knew what he was going to do. Yeah. The disciples didn't know what he was going to do. Right. But if they would have just had just a little bit of faith, a little bit. Yes. That, 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 that mustard seed that we love to talk about so oh, much, just a small Lord. amount of that faith, yes. then they would have understood what was actually about to transpire. Yes. Because most of those people on the, of that day was afraid of this man, yes. and the devil had thought he had him locked up and, 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 and under his control, and that was more or less like a secret weapon, I suppose, for him. Amen. Because he he, he gave him that, that that super strength to break those chains, and and, and he was living in the, in the cemetery in those yeah. caves and stuff. And the Jewish people had strong beliefs against all of this. Amen. Yes. They did. So so. They didn't understand it, nor did they want to even understand it or deal with it. 
But what if Jesus hadn't called the storm? What might have what would have happened? Where would the disciples be? Because they didn't have faith. But it reminds me of us today as, as the living church, the ones that are going on right now, because many of us have lost faith in our situation. We, we have a pandemic. There's nothing like that none of us seen in our lifetime. We see all of the some other stuff throughout history. The Spanish flu, the, red, the other flu, the, the, the bird flu. <laughs> and everybody just seen it as something small because we can overcome it. Right. And then comes 2020, and they have something for us that nobody was ready for. My God. And many people have lost their faith. Many people just they forgot all about God. You know, I think I, I just see them all the time when you, when you talk about it, and they hear me like at work talking about church. And yeah, we had church. We still going. We still participating. We still doing what God requires of us to do. Amen. And they said, "Why are you going there? You're not afraid to, to catch it." So I asked him, "Were you afraid to catch it when you went to Walmart?" All right, then. because I saw you there. And you you didn't look like you was concerned then. You you you, you felt safe uh-huh. enough to go and get things that you say you need, right. but you didn't you didn't see it as a priority to come to the house of God and get what you need. My God, my God, my God. It is one of the most beloved stories in the Bible, found in Mark, the fourth chapter, thirty fifth verse through forty first. Jesus and his Jesus and his disciples were crossing the Sea of Galilee. Yes. And when the storm rose in and the waves threatened to sink the boat, Mm -hmm. Jesus was asleep. Asleep? How can he sleep? Terrified was the disciples. They awakened him and asked if he cares that they might be killed. Jesus gets up and tells them, tells the wind and the waves to be still. And then asks the disciples why they were so afraid. Naturally, they are full of wonder of the event, but Jesus is rather casual about the whole thing. Well. Of course, there were several different ways we could interpret the story. Jesus knows the Father's plan. He knows that this, that, that this takes not the death, but this was not the death that was predicted for him. Amen. So he wasn't worried about dying like the disciples was Amen. because he already knew his time and place. Amen. He was also presumably knows that he can command the wind and waves, but now they knew. And they, they was wondering who, what kind of man is this that can command even the winds and the waves. Yeah, that's right. Man. But I find it more find a compelling truth in the events following this story. When they do arrive on the other side, they are immediately met by a man possessed by many demons. Mm -hmm. He was strong that even chains could not hold him. And everyone was afraid to pass by that way. This man was aggressive and violent. Mm -hmm. Not only that, he lived among the tombs. Mm -hmm. And there there was constantly in touch with death. The ultimate defilement in Jewish law both inside and out, the man was as corrupt as could be. Wow. Jesus comes to the man, the one whom no one else dares to approach. Mm-hmm. Come on now. He is no longer casual. Jesus. Now, we see Jesus relentlessly pursuing the demons that afflict this poor soul. And you can find that in Mark 5th chapter 8 verse. He is on the offensive early, early. When Jesus says to his disciples, let us go over to the other side. Uh He isn't just making an idle suggestion. He moves with purpose. Uh Knowing that the other side of the lake is a battleground. He will go and confront the servants of his enemy. And he will be victorious. So while they were crossing, no matter the ferocity of the wind and the size of the wave, Jesus is, is the storm rather than the enemy lies on the other side of it. My God. There is nothing to fear of this water. The storm is not the point. 
Storms threaten to sink our faith every day. Yes. These are the are the every storms, everyday storm inconveniences. Uh -huh. Like a flat tire that ha hassles you on your way to work. Uh -huh. These are the difficulties that cause you to question God's goodness, prolonged illness, uh -huh. the death of a loved one, yeah. the loss of a purpose, uh -huh. a marriage destroyed. Yeah. And it seems like God is asleep. If he if he really cared, he wouldn't let this happen. What many know. people say. Yeah. So we pray for healing and relief. Yes. An opportunity for re reconciliation for anything that will make the storm pass. Yes. What I see in this story, however, is that the storm is not the point. Come on now. The storm is the real and terrifying. Yes. The disciples believe that they were not were, would not survive. But the point is about surviving the storm. That's right. The point is about who is in the boat with you. Oh, Lord. Yes, Jesus can. And myself, I have encouraged by that knowledge. Yeah. But Jesus didn't come to calm storms. He Amen. came to save souls. Amen. Jesus didn't come to give me a comfortable life. He came to defeat death. Humble yourselves, therefore, unto the mighty hand of God, Amen. that the proper time he may exalt you, Amen. casting all your anxieties on him, Amen. because he cares for you. Yes. You can find that in 1 Peter 5, chapter, verses 6 and 7. We talk often enough of casting our anxieties on him, but how much do we hear about humbling ourselves under his mighty hand? The two things are linked in this passage. Casting our cares on him according to these verses is not simply a desire to avoid unpleasant circumstances, well. but rather a submission to whatever circumstances God may bring into your life. Uh -huh. yes. Simply because they are from God. Yes. The Apostle Paul exemplifies this in 2 Timothy, first chapter, verse 12. Referring to his calling as an apostle, as an apostle, but the hardship that goes with his appointment. That's right. Come on now. Which is why I suffer as I do, but I am not ashamed. For I know whom I have believed, mm -hmm. and I am convinced that I am able to guard until that day yes. what has been entrusted to me. Paul is not in denial about suffering. But his faith in Jesus Christ is unshaken regardless of the circumstances. Mm -hmm. yes. The storm is about a battle. Yes. I am not trying to diminish anyone's suffering, My nor God. suggest that you cannot cry out to Jesus about the storms in your life. Wow. He desires, after all, get up and calm the storm in this story. Amen. That's not that's not that Jesus doesn't care about your problem. It's just that your problem isn't going to sink the boat. Jesus does not say, let us go out into the middle of the lake and drown. Okay. Nor does he say, golly, all this teaching has really made me tired. Uh -uh. A little cruise would be just the thing. <laughs> he has a destination in mind. To save a soul, he has a battle to fight. Come on, man. Storms are frightening. Yes. I know what it is to think I cannot survive. My God. That God doesn't care. My God. That death would be preferably, preferable. Mm -hmm. Then at least it would be over. My I know what, what it feels like to be helpless well, and hopeless. Yes. Mm -hmm. And that's how you are feeling right now. Take cur take courage. Uh -huh. yes. Jesus, Jesus do not take people out into the middle of the sea to drown them. Uh -huh. He takes people across the sea so they can participate in his work of world redemption. Yes. He does not stand afar off and do, do this. 
No, he enters into the darkness, the evil, the yes. suffering yes. of this world. Yes. And he transforms it from within. My God. If we are following him, then we too enter into this darkness. Amen. We need to keep Jesus in sight. Yes. Mm -hmm. We need to understand who this is yes. that's asleep in this boat. That's right. The storm is not where you face the enemy. Mm. The storm is where you meet your God. Amen. It is an adversity when you come to the end of ourselves that we see the power of God in our lives. Yes. Holocaust survivors, Corey Team Bloom said, there is no pit so deep that God's love is not deeper still. Yeah. How can you really absorb the truth unless you are in the pit? Deep enough to make you to make you doubt it. I do cry out to God to save me from the storm mm -hmm. in my life. He didn't. The storm raged on until I reached the other side. Jesus. I saw his power over the storm yeah. in a different way. Well. I began to understand how he was using the storm to transform my life. Amen. To confront the evil. And the corruption within me. Yes. For a long time, I saw myself simply as one of the disciples in the boat. Well. Slowly, I came to understand that I was also a man in the grip of the legion. Well. I don't mean that I was possessed by demons. Well. But I was definitely full of sin and well. corruption. Well. Plagued by the wrong ideas. Well. But God... And about myself. Mm -hmm. And these things kept me from pursuing God and fully understanding him. Yeah. And here was Jesus coming through the storm to rescue me. Oh, yeah. Conforming through the storm, relief from the storm. Yeah. Is not the best thing that can happen to you. Wow. The best thing that can happen for you is to be conformed to the image of the Lord Jesus Christ. Oh, yes. The enemy can use the storm to make you anxious, well, afraid, well, hurt, well, and discouraged. Uh -huh. God can use, use it to make you fearless, yes. secure, yes. and steadfast. Yes. Yes. Jesus can calm the storm in your life, mm -hmm. but even if he does not, you can still trust that he will uphold you, and you can believe that he will transform you. Yes. And you can know that he loves you. Oh, yes. So we don't, we do not want to lose our heart through our, our outer self. It's wasting away. Our inner self is being renewed day by day. For this light momentary affliction is preparing us for an eternal weight of glory beyond comparison. You find that in 2 Corinthians 4, chapter, verses 16 and 17. Have you met your God through the storm? Yes. If so, how did it change you? Yes. Now that the storms in your life are trusting the true, re are the storms in your life trusting the true resource? And the true resource is Jesus Christ. So we ask you, are you trusting in Jesus? Or are you just depending on him because you know he's there? Do you believe that he can get you where you need to be? Yes. Even through your storm? Yes, he can. When I think about the storms, many of us always think about Job. Because Job went through what seemed to be in the Bible as you read. You know, it's what, uh, I think 42 chapters in Job. All of the problems that he had, all of the things he lost, all of the disease and things that hurt his body, losing his children. Uh -huh. And it goes on and on and on for those 42 chapters. But I want to just read from the 40, 42nd chapter, the last two verses in Job. Uh -huh. After this, Job lived 140 years. He saw his children and their children to the fourth generation. 
And so he died, old and full of years. Why I find that significant is because, like I said, before those two little small verses, they just they just talked about all of the problems and all of the issues. Mm -hmm. But when you research and you go back, yeah. it wasn't as long as many people thought it was. Yeah. Job, according to what, what, what the specialists say who researchers come up with, says that it was only a nine-month period well. where all of that stuff in those 42 chapters occurred. My then from that those from, from that from those forty two chapters, all of it that was like what seemed like it was a lifetime was only nine months. Nine but from months. there he was rewarded. God gave him all those years yeah. to live out his life. Yes, uh, successful more than he was before. Yeah, more children than he had before. Yeah. He even got to enjoy his grandchildren and great grands on to the fourth generation. Yeah. There's many people who would never see that. Because it took only God to be able to do that for him. Uh -huh. But many also forget that God recommended Job to the devil. Yes, he did. Because he already knew who Job was right. for him. Yes. So he had no, no, no second thoughts about saying, my servant Job can make it through this. That's yes. right. He gave the devil, told him to do your worst. Uh -huh. Many people don't realize that even when the devil did his worst, it still was not enough That's to right. stop what God had in, 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 in plan for Job. Amen. <laughs> the, the miraculous thing was that there was just a storm in Job's life. Amen. And Job stood in there yes, faithfully. Yes, he did. Even when everybody else was turning their back, all his friends, right. even God, his wife, my God, my God. cursed God and died. Yeah. Because they thought Job done something wrong. Job hadn't done nothing wrong. No, no. It was just time for a storm in his life. Yes. And he went through his storm and came out on the other side victorious. Yes. Amen. If many of us would just take a page from Job and do the same thing in our day-to-day -day lives now, yes. we, can, we can be just as victorious. Amen. Amen. You may not live four generations as he did, but God can bless you. Amen. He may bless you right now with enough Revenue and, and, and a contract or anything that can that can benefit your family for for a generation, Amen. setting them up in a whole other area, Amen. something that, that that you knew nothing about because you know you came up during the rough time, Amen. you stayed in the projects, yes. you know, and you you had to work work from from a check to check just to make it. Amen. Now he has blessed you, Amen. open the door for you. Yes. And the great thing about it is now, when you have that opportunity, you must teach the young people. Yeah. You must continue to let them know. In order for us to continue to be successful, we got to trust God in everything we do. Amen. Teach them how to pray. Yes. So when they're going through their trials, they don't go and get on the telephone. They don't go to Facebook posting about what's going on. Right. Instead, they find their, their little spot, wherever that may, may be for you. Amen. Some people say it's their closet for them. So I heard others say they go to their bathroom because Amen. nobody want to come to them when they're in the bathroom. Amen. And they can just steal away and yes. they can talk to God. Yes. I know for a fact my place is, is in my car. A lot of people think I'm crazy. Uh -huh. yeah. Because I get in my car and I park away from everybody and, I, and sometimes I see them, but there's a lot of times I don't see them because I am deep into what I'm doing. Amen. I am talking with God. Yeah. I'm trying to get an understanding for where I yeah. need to be. Yes. Where he wants me to be. That's right. What he needs me to do. Yes. And where I'm going to be headed as I see other people. Uh -huh. I try not to uh, sometimes believe it, but I see it and I know that I have this weird effect on people. Yeah. And I know it's nothing but God. Yeah. They, 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 they seek me for, their, for advice on everything. Stuff that I have no idea about sometimes. <laughs> And, and, uh, and I used to ask them if they were crazy. Why would you come ask me that? But now I realize when they, when they're coming, it's because sometimes they have exhausted all other other river, uh, avenues. That's right. Yeah. So now they're coming to where they feel comfortable. If they feel comfortable enough to come to me, Amen. and I don't have the answer, I ask them, just give me a moment. That's 
Let, let, let me pray about it. Let, let me see where, where, where we can find out about this. That's right. Because the thing that I have come to understand that is God can fix anything. Anything. No matter what they say. Amen. Because they told me I would never live back past 21. Yeah. Here I am 51. Thank God. Looking back wondering what did that really mean? What was those things those people were talking about? Why were they speaking that over me anyway? My God. As a young young child, my trying, trying to figure out where is my spot in this life. I already knew a little about church because my mama kept us in church. Yeah. But as a child, we didn't really pay attention to a lot of things. Just like any child. We got uh -huh. bored. Uh -huh. We went to sleep. Uh -huh. Some every now and then there will be somebody to come through and you could feel the power. Yeah. Coming off of that person and the things that they're teaching, and they will capture your attention. Amen. And then you would sit there and you would actually learn something. Right. And uh, what I found out from that point was I didn't like to read, but when somebody would plant that seed about something, especially biblical, I would find myself in this encyclopedia, in the Bible, going back and forth, trying to find out every little thing that I can about a story. Right. For the simple fact, I understood. That each story can be a little different depending on who tells it. That's right. But if it comes from God, no matter how how the little differences are, the truth gonna be there. That's right. So a lot of people get upset, and I hear people say it all the time. There's a guy at my job. He don't deal with church. He can't stand the church. That's stuff he say because he said a man wrote the Bible. Hmm. And then I sat there, and before I could even Think about it. I asked him, well, why do you go to school? Because every book that you doing your work out of, a man wrote that. That's right. But you're doing all of your assignments and doing all of the things you, you need to do in order to move on. But you have a problem because a man, well, several men wrote the Bible. Uh -huh. Because it's not just one book, it's a collection. That's right. Of many stories. Amen. Many truths. Yes. Yeah. And if you do just get it and you, you take the time and read it and get an understanding, which many people are afraid of, obviously, because they don't want to know the truth. That's right. Because when they know the truth, then they know that they are doing wrong. That's right. And they want to they want to just continue to do wrong and act like they, they don't know. And it's bad to be that way for the simple fact you still have to answer to God. Because right. when Jesus come back, we don't know the day or know the place or time. You're going to be caught up. Uh -huh. And now it, it becomes, are you ready to go back with him or are you going to be left? Right up. So are you going to still play this game that you don't want to know the real truth? Mm -hmm. you, don't want, you, don't want, you don't want to fight in this storm? Right up. Because that's all, all, all it is, a little storm. We right. all have them. Right. If you want to make it more practical, just think about the, your struggles from day to day. They have changed from Jesus' time. Well, we have we have more, more buildings. We have more transportation. Uh -huh. we, none of us got to walk the building. That's right. Because <laughs> if we did, we wouldn't make it for service. <laughs> It'll be the next day before we get here. All right. You got to start out early. Uh huh. Even if you was riding a horse or a donkey, you still got to start out early enough to get there because yeah. it's gonna take time. Yeah. But we was blessed with information and knowledge on how to create vehicles. Yeah. They can transport us from one place to another. Amen. And as things got easier, it seemed that man has gotten lazier. Yeah. Because God gave, gave that knowledge. He didn't have to do it. Right. But whatever, whatever his main goal is for us as the creator, we, we know Jesus came. We know he gave his life. Yeah. We know he changed us. We, he, he took us out of, out, out of the old way, yes. the covenant, covenant into, into grace. Yes. So now you have an opportunity. Yes. Think about the people who were back then who didn't get that opportunity, who died. Amen. What about them? Well, what, what, what chances will they have now because they didn't have this opportunity that we had? We, we have an opportunity to, to, to say, I'm going to church. Amen. Yes. I'm going to praise God. Yes. I'm going to walk around and hold my Bible. Yes. I'm going to go to the mall and sit down right here in the middle of this place, and I'm going to read my Bible out yes. loud. Because yes. I've been to those countries where if they saw that Bible in their hand, they're taking them down. 
Yeah. And they ain't, they, ain't, they ain't just gonna, gonna be nice with them. They gonna hit them with a stick. They might shoot them. That's right. They might even stick them with a blade. That's right. And then they gonna, then they gonna tie them up and they gonna take them away and they will not be seen by their family no time soon. Amen. Because nine times out of ten, they gonna lose their life. Amen. Because they don't, they don't have what we have. They can't just read this Bible. Right. They can't just sit there and talk to God like that. Right. So if you if you want to get caught up in, in somebody else's storm, then you can. We are here to help each other. Right. We're supposed to be servants one to another. Amen. If I see my brother and my sister suffering, well, and I can make their life a little bit easier, why let them go through? That's right. One thing that I did, it took me a long time to realize that if I bless this person, even if it's my last, what I think is my last, well, there's always Something coming from somewhere. Amen. 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 Week before last, I was sitting there trying to trying to figure out. I like, I didn't spend all my savings. I don't know what I'm gonna do. I got some more stuff that needed to be done. The, the, the new bills are now gonna be due. Where is it coming from? I don't know what I'm what I'm gonna do. Then one one of my friends came, and she was just tore up because. She said she didn't know what she was going to do. Her kids, her kids them didn't have nothing to eat. They didn't know what was going to happen. Of course, the, baby, the father of the kids is acting like an idiot about the situation. So I looked, and I sent my last out of my account to her. I honestly did. I, said, I just sent it to her. Told her don't worry about it. I don't even want it. I'm not looking to get it back. And she was like, well, do you, can you afford to do this? I told her don't worry about that. You go to take care of what you need to take care of. Mm -hmm. and, and let me worry about that. My God. Because right now you need to take care of your kids. That's right. If they're going to be hungry, and I mean, that, that, that's a, that, I can't say I understand that because I've never been hungry. I understood my mother did a lot of things and my father to make sure that we had. So uh -huh. there was very few times that we went to a cabinet or refrigerator and there was nothing in there. There was always something in there. Yeah. Might have not been what we wanted, but it was something in there. Yeah. But anyway, after I did that, I was about to call my wife and tell her, because she, she gets upset sometimes when she said I'm too impulsive on a lot of things. And I just going to let her know what I did. I know she wasn't going to get upset to that point, but it's just the idea that I got, gave my last. Mm -hmm. And you know, I want the account to go negative. You know, you know the whole thing, how the banks do it. Right. Charge you all those fees. But when I went to bring her number up, my cash got wrong. And I, I saw the dollar sign and I was like, well, what is this? So I clicked on it. And there was three people that I do not even know. They all three of them sent me $50 each. Oh because they said that Jay Friend told him to send me some money. Oh. And I immediately just started praying and thanking God. Come on. Because he didn't have to do it. No, he did. But he did. Yeah. He made that way. I don't know those people. Yeah. All I know is, 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 is I helped somebody that was in need. That was in a true need. They needed that. Yeah. Uh -huh. And I think sometimes here at the at not I'm not necessarily saying straight way. But several churches that there's a lot of people who forget That's right. that the people in need that they, 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 you got to help them now. You you can't sit there and beat them over the head with the word. No, you can't. Right. Because if somebody's sitting there hungry and they belly growling or their children is worked up, they can't even think right right my now. God, right. My God. Right. And, 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 and you should be more thoughtful just for the simple fact that God allowed them to come among among us anyway. Why? Because we 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 supposed to help them at that moment. We supposed to build their spirit up. We yeah. supposed to help them. Amen. If I can't do nothing for you, I don't want to do nothing to hurt you. Amen. So I don't mind giving and helping those who are in need. Amen. Because I understand that there's gonna be a blessing somewhere. Amen. Sometimes it don't happen as fast as that. That's but I just find that just amazing that it happened that way. I'm talking less than an hour. I mean. <laughs> It, it, it's just unbelievable that people that you don't even know would do that. Mm -hmm. But the Bible does speak on that. Oh, yes. <laughs> the, 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 the riches are, are going to be for the
give it to the saints. Right. But a lot of people forget about it. And then, uh, then there's a lot of other people who only want to talk about the pastor. Uh -huh. And what the pastor doing with the offering. Well, and half of them don't know what's going on with all That's right. That's right. Well, I've, I've been around people who, who badmouth my mom, and my mom most of the time don't even know what went in the bank or what was collected and unless she directly asked me because, because I get it and I just take it. That's so half the time she, knows, she don't even know. But I've heard people make, make say that junk before. Mm -hmm. Oh, they just taking that. They going to do this here. Maybe that's, maybe that's how she got that, that little outfit she got on. Mm. But I found out there's a better way than to get upset. Amen. Or, or call yourself going off on them. Uh-huh. At that very moment. Well, Even though it hurts. Uh-huh. To, to, to hear them talk about somebody you love that way when you know that, that that's not what's going on. Amen. But what I do now is just pray for them. That's right. And I, I give it to God. Because I know he already sees it. He already knows what's going on. Right. He's already decided and made, laid out the path anyway. But the choice is up to you as an individual. Are you going to walk that straight and narrow, or are you going to be one of those who get caught up in the storm? Mm -hmm. I hope that I said something Amen. that inspired you today. Amen. Yes, Lord. And I just, just continue to ask you to play, pray for, for me and my family yes, yes. as we continue to go on and get stronger. Amen. Because I know that there, there, there's going to be better days. Yes. And, and I actually... Used to worry about about straightway. You know, we've been here for a long time, uh -huh. and in one moment we we looked like we were growing, and then all of a sudden it stopped again. My God. Now it looks like it's just a faithful few again. Amen. Still holding on. But I, I was I was praying, and I, I heard heard that small still voice say, "It's not about who's coming. Come on now. It's not about what they saying. My God. Because even though it looks like nobody is here." Mm -hmm. Straightway is touching people all over this world. Yes, There's amen. people who calling and talking about what they seeing, and to me that is just a wonderful thing because we are able to put ourselves out there on the broadcast. Amen. And there's actually people who are listening faithfully. Amen. Who are looking for straightway. Amen. And and, and they, they want they want to talk they want to talk to us about different things and right. people want to want to invite us. Here and there. But I, I don't know about nobody else, but I've just been telling them right now, even the time. And I say, I, I've mentioned it to the pastor, but I can tell you right now, until until we see the way or God shows us the way, That's right. we just gonna hold fast to what we're doing. Amen. We're, gonna, we're gonna just right. keep our place right here. We're just gonna Amen. keep Amen. worshiping and praising God right here right. and wait for our miracle. Yeah. Because, because once we get what, what we supposed to have, Amen. and if we let our light shine, yes. everybody gonna see it. Amen. It's hard not to see a light in darkness. That's right. And this world is full of darkness. Yes, so when you standing out there and your light shining, yes. oh yeah, the, the enemy see it. He see Amen. it. Amen. And that's why he's causing so many problems. That's why he wanna make it hard. Come that's on, why man. that's why people bodies being attacked. That, that's why you say you woke up and you couldn't get rid of that, that headache. It was pounding. It was killing you. You feel like you don't want to move. He don't want you to get here. He don't want you to be a part of his greatness. You're telling the truth. Because when it happens, I just wonder who's going to be ready. Who's going to be ready if right now, if somebody say, we're going to take a bus out here and we're going to see what's going on. Uh-huh. Or, 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 or we gonna get we gonna get them a bus uh -huh. and see what happens. Uh -huh. And then now those people who saying I can't make that drive. Well, I don't I I don't drive well. Well, I don't have a car. Uh -huh. And then God opened that door because I've already personally visualized and seen that bus. Uh -huh. And I've seen the bus going around being filled up with many different people yeah. coming to straightway. Yeah. And then when it happened, I don't understand. I didn't understand exactly what happened, but this church opened up. I don't know how they really explain it, but it, it, it opened like wide open. Amen. And the people were just being blessed, and as they were being blessed, they kept telling other people, "We didn't even have enough seats 
for all of the people who were coming. My God. And then we started many different programs that were helping other people, which in return drew them closer to us. Yes. Some of them had came for the wrong reasons. Uh -huh. That's what they thought. That's what they had in their mind. Then they got here and God worked a miracle in their life. Thank the Lord. It wasn't even prepared for what was going to happen. My God. It reminds me of years ago when the drunk man came on me on S Avenue. Yeah. And on uh -huh. disrupted service. Uh -huh. And we was all like, what we gonna do, what we gonna do? Everybody wanna was was thinking about maybe we should put him out. But the man of God just kept on preaching. Uh -huh. Walked over, put his hand on him. Next thing you know, he was sitting down on the front pew, sober, uh -huh. listening to what was being told Amen. to him from the Amen. man of God. Amen. So no matter what the devil throws at us, you don't have to let that storm affect you at all. Amen. Just continue to be prayerful and understanding that God has a plan for us. Oh yeah. God bless you. Amen. Oh, Satan's on my track, trying to turn me back. Got to make the journey somehow, somehow, somehow. somehow. Oh, I got to make the journey somehow. Oh, Satan's on my track, trying to turn me back. Got to make the journey somehow, somehow.
that you can make it to the other side. Might be sickness. It might be death. But whatever it is, God is in control today. Jesus is on board. Whatever is going on, he can steal the waters. He can give you peace of mind. He can heal every sickness. Even if it's in the mind. Thank you, Jesus. Have your way, God. Move by your spirit. Heal every sick body. Every sick mind. You take control. You speak peace. And when you speak it, it's done. You'll be to the other side before you realize it. And God, we thank you for doing the work even now. For calming the storm that's in our lives. Giving us the strength, the mentality that you show us how to go to the other side. Thank you for, hallelujah. Thank you for calming the storm. Have your way. Save the unsaved. Reclaim the backsliders. And God, we thank you for calming the storm. Giving us peace of mind. Help us to be light in darkness. Help us to be whatever we need to be to your people. To show them the way home. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Bless your name, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for the healing, God. Thank you for the insight. Thank you for deliverance in Jesus' name. And God, if they are in it, if they're without a church home, you touch them. Send them, God, where they need to be. That they will be fed. Hallelujah. Just move by your spirit. We thank you. For the people that you're allowing us to minister to, have your way. Move by your spirit. You take control. And we say thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. Continue to move by your spirit. Whatever you do, we say thank you. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And God, we ask you to minister to the man of God. Oh God. Oh God, give him strength. And God, you already said he's going to minister to me. God, we ask you to continue speaking his spirit. Hallelujah. Use him the way you see fit. Have your way in this life. In his home, God. On his job, wherever he go. You continue to lead him and guide him. And we thank you for your anointing. And God, I know we haven't seen anything yet. We thank you for your continued anointing. Do it in a mighty way. And we say thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen and amen. Glory to God. At this time, Deacon Terrence Lippert will come and get our offering. Also, we know that this is Phil Sunday. Last Sunday was four Sunday, the Sunday that we set aside to take up an offer for our musicians.